Hello and welcome to this quick start video for the Antonov AN225. So what are we going to be covering in today's video? We're going to be doing a flight from Leipzig to Frankfurt using the InSIM checklist system and really going to keep procedures to what you need to know just to get the aircraft up into the air and en route. So how do we start? First of all, we're going to be using the InSIM planning system. So our departure is going to be EDDP. So Leipzig Airport, and we're going to be going from stand 101. Then we're going to be going to EDDF. And we want to choose on the left here, high altitude airways. So that approach looks fine to me and that route looks good as well. So flight conditions wise, I recommend when you start using just few clouds. And that's what I'm going to do. All right, so that's the route set up, and let's jump into the sim. Okay, here we are on stand 101 in Leipzig. So I actually selected that stand on the world map. What are we going to do? We're going to be using the in-sim checklist. Now, how do we get access to the in-sim checklist? We simply move our mouse up to the top, and we have checklist. Now, definitely something I recommend is making sure that you have the autocomplete page function enabled. And this is inside your assistance options settings. So all we're going to do is click autocomplete. And we can hear a few things going on. Now you might notice that there's a bit of slowdown while this happens. That's because it's doing a lot of different items. Now at the moment, can you see how it says copilot processing dot 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 dot? Well, it's waiting for that item that we're on to be completed. So we have to just sit here and wait. It's not broken, it's just waiting for that to be complete. And when it is complete, it's gonna automatically go through all the rest of the checklist and it's gonna wait again for the second item and then it will complete. So you're gonna join me back when this whole checklist is complete because you just basically have to just sit here and wait. Okay, so the electrical power up is now completed. Let's move on to fuel and hydraulics. We just click all code complete. Now there's a lot of fuel pumps that get flicked and things like this, so you'll hear a lot of things changing. And it's completed. So let's move to payload and setup. Now we can just auto-complete this one because this is how you load it using the iPad. And we're not going to be using that today. We're going to be keeping things nice and simple by using the weight and balance menu. This all fully functions. And we can set how much weight we want to carry here and you can see that it's going to set it in all the different areas of the aeroplane and we have our fuel so by default it loads in with 50 percent fuel it's around about um, 80 000 kilos each side so 160 000 kilos which is a lot of fuel <laughs> so it's a lot of fuel and it's enough to get, get you pretty far so here's a really really rough rule and it's as rough as they come when it comes to sort of working range out this plane uses around about 20,000 kilos an hour. That includes taxiing and taking off, so it's kind of like a high average. So if you think about it, if you've got 20,000 kilos in there, that's good for a one hour flight. 40,000 kilos is good for a two hour flight. And then 80,000 kilos is good for a four hour flight, etc., etc. So the default fuel that it loads in with here is it's actually plenty. It's normally enough to get you really quite far. So you can just leave it and you can just adjust all this as you would in any other aeroplane. And we're going to move on to the autopilot setup. Now, there's a few things that I want to talk about here. So we're going to move down to the unit here. Now, this is just the normal working title GNS 530. And this video isn't going to really cover how you use this because that is something that's used in a lot of different aeroplanes and I want to try and keep this more focused on how we operate quickly the Antonov because you may have a good knowledge of this. Um, if you don't, I'm sure there are plenty of tutorials that show really good stuff about how this unit works as well. But there is one subtle difference. So can you see this little button here? If we press it, do you see how it kind of gets overridden? Now, you might say, well, why is that? You just told me it's a normal Garmin. It is, but it's coupled up to our custom autopilot like the custom for the Antonov and when you have that selector on the autopilot set to the right position 
it will automatically set this for you. So it's actually easier. So basically, don't worry about that. Just make sure that you have the right mode set on the autopilot and that's it. You don't have to worry about anything at all and it will always set this to the correct mode. So what do we have to do? So setup as required, well, we just turned it on and when we look, our whole our flight plan's in there because we just loaded it from the world maps. So nothing to do there. We can move up to the autopilot. Now, let's keep things really simple. Speed, you can set 300 in here. So this is 300 kilometers per hour. So this is all in kilometers per hour. If you want to have a conversion on the iPad, there is actually a section for converting. You can type in what you want and it will give you a conversion to the generically used units. So that is there if you want to. How high are we going to go? We're going to go up to 5,000 meters. Very rough rule. It's about times 3.3. So you can think about that. Or times 3 if you want to keep it very easy. So that's what about 15,000 feet plus 30%, so 18, 19,000 feet, which is fine. That's as high as we want to go to. Then we want to make sure we set this one to this position here, Navig, so that's navigation, and that's what we do, and that's done. So now the Garmin will be set up, and we can auto-complete that. So let's move back a little bit. Auto engine start. So we just click auto-complete. And again, it's now gonna wait for the engines to automatically start up. There are six of them, and it takes a minute and a bit each. So this takes a while. This takes, you know, at least six or seven minutes to, to actually start all the engines up. And you might say, well, how, how can I track how far through I am? There's quite a few ways. So first of all, you can do it sort of the official way, if you wanna call it that. Now this is the engineers panel, and you can see here, this shows you the engines where they're moving and you can see here this engine's now starting because this is the temperature for the engine and you can see the measles rising but by far the easiest way to see how many engines you have started is you see these red lights now they're the same red lights that we have flashing at the front here and I can click this to stop them flashing do you see how one of them's gone out now that means hey the engine is is, is starting and is nearly started so when these little lights go out you know, hey, great, the engines are all gone. So when all these lights are out, you're good to go. So you're gonna join me when this order engine start is completed because it's just gonna move on itself afterwards and all over All right, so it's now finished as all the engines have started. So manual engine start, don't have to worry about this one so we can skip this one here. After engine start, let's auto complete that. And line up an engine run up. So, we're now gonna taxi out, and you're gonna join me when we're by the runway. All right, here we are holding short of the runway. So we're just gonna auto-complete this now, and take off. Now we have to do something a little different. So we now manually set the flaps down all the way. So we take off with the flaps all the way down, and we can check their position by looking at them here, or we can look on the outside view. And now we take off, so let's line up and take off. Okay, so what do we do to take off? Release the parking brake, and we just hold the power all the way down. There we go. We can just push it all the way forward, and now we're going. Remember this little blue mark here, so this little blue mark on the airspeed indicator, this is where we're going to pull back on the stick, okay? So that's our rotation speed and such. Yeah, so the little blue mark. So we can see there's 200 kilometers per hour. Remember, kilometers per hour. And we're coming up to our little blue mark now. So I'm going to pull back on the stick. And off it comes. And now I can just sort of let go. And you can see it's flying quite nicely so I'm going to auto complete this page now and that's going to do everything else for us in terms of the landing gear and things like that so that's nice and simple so let's try and make our work load a bit easier let's put the autopilot on and now we can press the navigation now you notice it's not turning right so how do we fix that so what we do is we need to tell it where to go because the point's behind us. So we go direct to, and we just press enter, activate. And now look, there we go. See how we're turning on route. Now what we can do is to control our speed, we can press this button here, 
and that will now control the speed of what we have on the dial here. And now we have a look at the climb checklist. And I wouldn't recommend using autocomplete on this because it's going to automatically put the flaps up for us, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to follow it through. So start accelerating slowly. That's what we're doing. And it has flaps. So it says set flaps 25, so 225 at 330. All right. So what we're going to do we're going to press this little white button here. Now, if you know what it is, this acts as level change. So we press that on. And we're going to move the number up to 330. So once we get to 330, we're then going to go one stage of flat up. And then we're going to look at the next one. So it says 380. So now we're going to set 380. Now we're getting to 380, we go one up again. And now we're going to set 405. Like that. Getting there now, so we set that up as well. And then after that, it says to set 440. Just doing this to try and show you how easy it can be. Alrighty, we're getting close to the speed there. And now we set them all the way up. And now we can just leave, leave that speed like that now. And it's going to automatically climb all the way up at this speed. So there's nothing else we need to do. So we can auto-complete this page now. So there we go. So everything's been done. So now the plane is going to climb all the way up. And it's going to follow the route that you have programmed in automatically. And for descent, it can be quite complicated in terms of where do we need to go, but I would use the VNAV function. So if you know what that is, it's on this page here, VNAV, and it works just like it does in any other Garmin videos. And on the other tutorial series, we go over it, but I think it's a little bit complicated. I don't want to make this video more complicated than it needs to be, but that's a, that's a function that you can use, and it works the same way as any other Garmin. Okay, so this is where we're going to leave the video now because for flying the approaches, I'm going to mention a few items here, but I, I, like I said, I don't want to overcomplicate this video. If you know what it is, and if you want to fly an ILS approach, no worries if you don't know what it is, you set the frequency here, okay? So you set the frequency that you want to set, you put it in here, that's where you put it, and this is where you put the course. How I recommend, if you're new to this aircraft and you just want to do an approach, just do a visual approach. Make sure you have nice weather like I have today, clear skies or few clouds. When you get close to the runway, just disconnect the autopilot. So we do that by pressing this button here. And we disconnect the auto throttle for landing as well by pressing that button there. And you just visually fly the thing in and land it because it's, it's super fun to fly visually. It's nice and heavy and you can really feel how it, how it flies. If you want to follow a bit more complexity on this tutorials, we also have available the other tutorial series that goes through this in a fair bit more depth. Now, we're going to jump back onto the ground and we're going to explain some of the other options we have available for quickly getting you into the air. Here we are back on stand 101. So what other options do we have available for just getting ourselves going as quick as possible? First of all, if you load yourself onto the runway, then the aircraft will be fully set up, ready to take off, and then you can just take off as you did, following the rest of the checklist in the video. So that's an option that you can have. Or, if you don't want to be bothered with all these automatic checklists, we can come and look at the iPad that we have here. And can you see this button here that says, ready to fly? I'm just gonna click this one button, and you can hear, oh, everything is setting itself up. Now, what this is doing is this is doing what I will call a quick start on the engine. So remember I told you it takes around six minutes for the engine to start. With this, it only takes about a minute or two. So if you just really want to get in the plane and let's go, press that button and it's going to start all the engines up and it's going to set the flaps and everything and you'll be ready to go. So you can also use that as an option to get going. Finally, let's talk about the AI co-pilot. So there is one thing that you have to do in this aircraft that is different from other aircraft to start off with. If you load onto the runway and you want to use your AO co-pilot, it will work no problems at all. But if you load here, cold and dark, so with the aircraft shut down, 
you must do before you activate your AI co-pilot is click the ready to fly. Just wait for the aircraft to start up, which should only take about a minute. And then we can go into our options menu to our flight assistance, and then we can enable our AI co-pilot and then it will work absolutely fine. It's just because we're using a custom electrical system so the aircraft needs to be turned on first and then it will be able to take over from that. I do hope that this quick start video was helpful. It just shows you the best and easiest way that you can get yourself up and going with the Antonov AN225. I do hope you enjoy flying the aircraft and having fun with it. And once again, if you want to learn a little bit more about it, we also have other video series available for the Antonov. Thank you very much.